Do you hear me clear? Loud and clear? Okay, great. Um, so I am Jasper Nyans. I'm going to bring you this talk about from Tesla hacking to Freedom EV, Freedom EV project. So um, quite excited to be here, honestly. It's um, been about 18 years that I come to Fosdem. I have missed a few years, I have to admit. And I have submitted quite a few talks, and this is my first talk at Fosdem. <laughs> Thank you, guys. I'm so proud to be here and to be able to present this to you because, obviously, you are also the people who I adm admire so much. And probably the reason why I didn't get any talk earlier is just because I have the habit of wearing a shirt like this and everybody thinks I'm stupid. <laughs> Good. I am Jasper Nijans. I'm founder of Linux Belgium. We do make money with free and open source software training and consultancy. Purely open source. We don't sell any Red Hat subscription or things like that. Um, we try to focus on what's the heart of our community. And I'm very interested in EVs since Tesla. And obviously, I all owe it thanks to you guys. The entire community is what has made this possible for me. And um, yeah, I'm humbled by it. Thank you. So um, first of all, I'm, I'm a Tesla customer. I'm not a Tesla supplier or employee. Um, and there are some disclaimers, of course, with hacking cars. They are relatively big, and you can run people over with them and things like that. But of course, there are other tools which are dangerous as well, like a knife, which can be used for perfectly peaceful purposes as well. So it's also a little bit uncertain what level of endorsement there is, both officially and unofficially, by Tesla. Um, we are quite optimistic. Uh, but and there are some rumors, but more about that later, probably. How many of you, is there somebody here who has a Tesla? Who's a Tesla owner? Okay, quite a few Tesla owners. Great. Um, hopefully some contributors. <laughs> okay. Are there people who have um, a reservation, who don't have a Tesla yet, but who are looking for one? Yay, cheers to that. We will have some work to port Freedom EV to that. A car I'm working on, my Model X, nice gold wing doors. It's, uh, well, yeah, Falcon wings doors, I have to say. It's uh, fantastic. The Porsche is for sale, by the way. Doing away, replacing it with a Model S. Once you drive electric, there's no going back. It's really fantastic to drive. Um, you're not doing any pollution either. Um, you can easily, I think, if you plan a little bit, you can drive 1,000 kilometers without having to wait. I don't like waiting. In a gas station, you have to fill up your car. You have to wait there a few minutes. I don't like waiting. And with a car, you have to charge. But if it charges very quickly at 120 kilowatts, and if you combine it with a toilet break, I do have to pee a lot. Or if you take a lunch break, it's completely full. Uh, pee break, just 100 kilometers charged quickly. And lunch, it's completely full, or dinner. So 1,000 kilometers without having to wait. And otherwise, it's just full when you start at home, so you never have to go to the petrol station. Just plug it in at night and walk away. For Tesla, it's important to accelerate the world's transition to sustainable energy. That's their mission. Something, of course, which is uh, very nice to say. Um, Self so contributed a little bit to that. Uh, saved over 16 tons of CO2 added to that all the other uh, pollution of our atmosphere over the last one and a half years. So. The problem, of course, that for many, electric cars are still too expensive. And um, this is hopefully something which is changing. Um, right now, 
for 40,000 euro, you get a Kia e Niro or a Kona electric or a Nissan Leaf, which are already very nice cars and which can, can get you everywhere you want. Tesla, it's still a bit higher. It's announced that they will reduce prices and I think it will happen this year and early next year that prices will trickle down. Also, the other car manufacturers are going to launch more electric cars. So just be a little bit patient if you don't have money for it yet. Just don't buy a new internal combustion engine car because it will have a lifetime of 30 years. And yeah, better if you really can afford it, just buy a second-hand car. Good. So, coming to the mission of Freedom EV. So why is this Tesla hacking, in which um, played around with the system, is evolving now into an open source project? Well, it is clear that the future of mobility, which has been stuck in the dark ages for so long, with analog and proprietary technologies, is now completely digital and running on Linux. And because it runs on Linux, we have it full, fully under our control. Well, maybe. There is, for example, also this project called Automotive Create Linux from the Linux Foundation. And this is fantastic. It allows car manufacturers to run Linux on their cars, to build Linux for their cars, um, and to more easily uh, build that based upon the Yocto project. Now, if it means that you've got a lot of freedom, but if it's completely locked down into a box which you cannot touch, what kind of freedom is that? So it's all about control. Cars are the symbol of freedom for many car manufacturers. I was never that much of a car geek, but if you look at all the commercials, it's nice landscapes and cars driving through it, symbol of freedom. But if these symbols of freedom are constantly connected to the internet, can be, par can be used as surveillance, mass surveillance weapons against the public, it's not that great, of course. So there are some disadvantages, some dangers about the new technology as well. And obviously we think that um, Tesla is doing the right job, but um, not all car manufacturers will play nice. And it's not because we trust the company now that it will prove to be so in the future. I've seen on the, on the stage of Fosdem also Facebook a long time ago when they were just a small company very enthusiastic about their new technologies. Now people would probably be more critical about what they are doing with respect to privacy. Same goes for Google, same goes for Apple. So what will evolve in the future? We don't know, unless we have control ourselves over our own vehicles. So it's about that. And obviously also to add some nice features to it as well. So we have some founding principles. Um, first of all, Freedom EV needs to enable maximum functionality of your car while preserving the original software. If you bring your car in for service, the car guy, the car technician, he doesn't know anything about open source or freedom or privacy and software rights. You might want to educate them. But they're more concerned about getting your car working, and, and obviously so. So they should not be confronted with our own experimentations on our car. So I think it's important for the Freedom EV project that it is easily to disable, easy to install, and that it preserves also the original software. So that basically, as a user, you are trusting the manufacturer, and the open source project, of which you can verify the code your source code yourself. And you're not trusting anything else. So that's a little bit of the founding principles. Also, lastly, I think it's important to avoid conflicts with manufacturers. Tesla, for example, they sometimes sell software-enabled features. 
new version of the Model X and the Model S has a 100 kilowatt hour battery, but it's not fully accessible unless you pay an extra price using software, uh, using root, software, root uh, privileges. Freedom EV project could enable that, but of course that's not the idea. We want to respect the business model of this company. If it's possible to enhance the performance and they don't sell such a package, obviously it is nice to do. So we have to find the right way there. Um, and I think it's important not to do any abuse. One of the new features for the Tesla, which I will introduce with Freedom EV today, is hotspot mode. And it uses the Tesla network to get internet connection and in-car Wi-Fi experience in your car. Obviously, it can incur costs for Tesla of this bandwidth. So for that, we are also building that it keeps track of the amount of volume so they could possibly bill it. We don't want to abuse the system. We just make it, want to make it more useful. Our son is really, he loves it. So we had to make some design decisions. Um, three design decisions are made. First one is that we have one script, slash fast slash freedom EV start which is launched by the car as the root user from a persistent storage location. So these two things are a requirement for running Freedom EV on any car. You need to have root access, hopefully, and um, a persistent location to put a script. Um, so, and of course, the car needs to run Linux because <clears throat> we'll run the entire Freedom EV project as a CH rooted addition to the system. So it is a bash script. We chose for bash script because bash or ash is available on most embedded Linux systems and so also on the cars running Linux. Then it uses a USB stick. Most cars have USB stick, um, USB port for charging, and in the case of the Tesla, it is not only used for charging, it also direct connects directly to the central display of the car. And on this USB stick, there is a root file system containing Ubuntu. Now, what's important to realize is that power management can at any time disable the USB stick. Normally not while driving, but if you park the car, it can go in power saving mode and then the USB stick is no longer there. So we need to manage that. Now, why did we choose Ubuntu? And this is a dangerous thing to say here in FOSDEM because obviously we have some nice contributors to Debian and to, to Arch um, and to other exciting Linux distributions in this room. And for to those guys, I'm sorry. We have to pick one. And obviously Ubuntu is a nice choice because NVIDIA Tegra for Ubuntu was already available. You can just apt yet install 10,000 of packages compared to with Yocto where we need to cross compile everything and fiddle with recipes. It's just, you know, a lot easier. So please don't be sad for the other guys. And obviously, um, it doesn't necessarily need to be that. It just happens to be this way. So with respect to the automotive grade Linux, it is not impossible that Freedom EV will also evolve as a layer towards Yocto. And in this way, it can also be easily integrated with that. But that's probably two or three steps ahead. Oh yeah, and maybe a little bit of criticism towards Yocto. If you want to run Yocto with a GUI and you know dependencies like Chromium, for example, you end up with something which is the same size of Ubuntu. Come on, guys, you can do better than that. <laughs> so maybe a good advertisement for Ubuntu. I don't know. <laughs> <coughs> I try to change every two years uh, Linux distribution running on my own laptop. To just to, you know, running Manjaro right now on the other laptop, so, yeah. Okay, so another design decision, the third design decision 
is um, how to configure everything we want to do with Freedom EV. Well, uh, through a web interface. And obviously, we could have chosen something lightweight, but um, yeah, we went for Nginx and PHP, FPM, and looked the other day, and it's only consume about 10 megabytes of RAM. It has two gigabytes of RAM. It's not the most optimal RAM-wise, but it's high performance and low overhead, so why not? It's not written in stone. We can change that if we like. So with respect to the functionality, we have bundled the functionality together in so-called Freedom EV apps. Um, popular name, maybe. But what's important for that is that they have a proper activation when the USB stick is detected. And when the USB stick is lost, the entire root file system is gone. Well, maybe there are still some processes dangling. So we need to properly deactivate them as well. So maybe also some things need to be periodically run. So all that kind of functionality is provided out of the activation of Freedom EV. So let's have a look at how it all comes together. future of mobility, we are adding a layer of freedom. Enabling Freedom EV is as simple as pasting one line of code to your Tesla. Here, you can select it. We go to our root shell. On our Tesla. Installation script will run. It will verify if it's not running the CH root, not yet installed. If it's the correct car, it will download and install the Freedom of eStart script and install it inside the Chrome tab. That's all it does. And it says Freedom EV installed. Have fun. After that, we only need to insert a USB stick. When the stick is inserted, within the minute, Freedom EV will detect that it's there. Freedom EV is configurable through a web interface. Okay. is configurable through a web interface. And the IP address of the machine and see all the different modes to enable. If we remove the USB stick, the Freedom EV software will detect the stick is no longer there and stop all remaining software. Good. So, um, I have a second movie coming up later, uh, which explains a little bit more. Uh, so here, um, we have a little bit more technical details about our Tesla. Our Tesla is basically um, a computer network, which just happens to have a big battery and some wheels. Um, so, the instrument cluster, which is the display behind the steering wheel here, um, as this IP address, we have the big screen, which is over here, which is a 17-inch um, screen. It is actually a display which is rotated on its side. So, um, the NVIDIA Tegra has, as far as I know it, no possibility of, um, from the video driver, rotating it. And that's probably the reason why the Qt application, which is constantly visible, written by Tesla, is actually on its side. 
So, and that's also probably the reason why they're stuck with um, Qt4, um, because um, Qt5 obviously has contributed a lot of nice features compared to Qt4, but one of the disadvantages with Qt5 is that with Qt4 you could just say rotate 90 degrees. And with Qt5 you have to basically turn all the widgets. So I presume that that's the reason why they do it like that. The disadvantage with that is, of course, that if we use the X display directly and we send an X term on it, it will be visible on its side. So actually, I wanted to put that into another movie, but yeah, um, time constraints. So, um, and this, of course, also means that if we want to visualize stuff directly to the X server ourselves, we need to make sure that it's rotated or that it's an application which um, supports 90 degrees rotation. The general software-based framework in the kernel for turning 90 degrees and 180 and something like that would be nice. Just saying. <laughs> but okay. Good. Um, gateway 102, 103. If you like it in the open source world, don't complain. Just do it. So I know, I know. Um, autopilot. Uh, so um, I'll go over the systems one by one. There is also the uplink, uh, which is connected to the USB and Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, which is connected uh, basically to the, um, to the USB of the central display. So this is the instrument cluster. This is um, the back of the instrument cluster. If you, if you open up the car, I not, never opened up a car before. But um, luckily, the Tesla is relatively easy to open up. It's also only one screwdriver you need. Um, it's the same screws everywhere. They did really a good job. And um, it, um, the instrument cluster behind the steering wheel has a leaked SSH key. So if you have access to the internal network, you can get access uh, to that. So it boots a SquashFS compressed read-only file system, but the slash far partition is writable. Uh, and persistent across reboot, so we can put stuff uh, in there. It's very similar than what's on the central display. The things like steering wheel buttons are attached to this um, instrument cluster, and the input is sent over the Ethernet. It's actually a good way to know if your Ethernet connection is working. Just use a scroll wheel, nothing happens. It's your Ethernet, which doesn't work. The guys from Tesla servers were actually quite surprised that I knew that. Uh, <laughs> Because, of course, I, I fiddled with it. I put a switch in there in between and things like that. Um, so settings are stored in SQL3, SQLite uh, 3 database. And there's also a comment to view uh, those comments, uh, LVS. You can also change uh, all the parameters and variables stored in there in a persistent and non-persistent way. Instrument cluster, be careful when you remove it. The connector has a click mechanism. It's very easy once you know it, but otherwise difficult to, um, uh, to use. Uh, at uh, SHA a few years ago, um, Italian uh, friend helped me with that first time. Then the central display. Um, so it's um, 192.168.90.100. Um, it's an NVIDIA Tegra quad-core uh, system. Um, now, on the newer cars, it is Intel-based systems. And so we currently don't support that yet. Uh, if you have such a car and you have root access to it, uh, we can try to port uh, Freedom EV to it. I'm sure it won't be that, that difficult, and we'll have to just make another uh, file system image of uh, probably Ubuntu on Intel compatible then. Um, or whatever you like, it's your car. <laughs> <coughs> Good. So um, it runs the cute based uh, web browser, um, which most people don't really like. Um, it's not that great. So um, being able to use, use that for the configuration of Freedom FE is, of course, a nice application because most people don't use it for some, anything else anyway. So, okay. Then uh, we see an end map of the system. 
Um, obviously, there is a lot of interest to um, be able to get root access, and we'll come back, back to that uh, in later. There is also the Parrot um, USB connected Bluetooth, uh, Wi-Fi, and LTE module, um, which is own IP addresses. Um, can be accessed uh, through Telnet. Um, it's only physically accessible from the central unit, and it's a very small microcontroller, but it runs um, a built root um, file system. Then there is another uh, device, a gateway, uh, running free ERTOS, um, and which is attached to the canvases, so to control basically uh, most uh, vehicle functions. There are six uh, canvases typically used in automotive industry, and um, attached to the gateway. It used to uh, contain um, a password which you could extract from the SD card uh, located inside the CID, but it's no longer the case. Uh, whenever there are easy ways to get root, Tesla fixes it. And obviously, that's a good thing uh, because there is also the potential for abuse. But we'll come back to that. Autopilot uh, 2.0 has its own IP address. It's um, basically the, the most um, powerful system um, on the, in the car, obviously. Um, there is a new version of the Autopilot which will come out um, this year, Autopilot uh, 3.0, which contains a SOC uh, developed by Tesla themselves. It's quite amazing. Um, it will um, enable about 100 times as fast um, processing of, um, you look only once, uh, images uh, from the um, eight cameras on the system. So, um, but this generation um, is NVIDIA PX2 based, uh, two Denver cores for ARM A57s and one Pascal GPU to do the heavy lifting for the image analysis and to assist in um, getting people where they want without a lot of effort. So, how do we get root? I get the question a lot. Uh, now, the Freedom EV project is not about how to get root. It's pre basically a prerequisite. Okay, but how to get root? Um, so, um, getting onto the physical Ethernet network is the first step. So, it has um, a FACRA connector. You can basically try to fiddle and figure it out by yourself. Um, but of, there are also uh, pre made, over expensive uh, cables you can find on uh, eBay. Um, but, okay, yeah. They're called Tesla service access cables. And they also fit in a, in a connector be, below the steering, be, below the central display here. Um, now, the, the um, port below the central display is locked by Tesla Ethernet. It's locked, and um, it can be activated by a tool which Tesla service uses. It's called Toolkit. And um, this sends a cryptographic token to uh, unlock this port. Some people don't like that um, because it's known that um, people who steal Teslas can also have toolkit. So if they then enable the port, break a window, enable the port, plug it in, have root, disable the alarm, start the car, then it can happen very quickly that um, it's assisted in stealing a car. So. Also, one of the things we want to add to uh, Freedom of E is just to disable that uh, security token. It's called sec -ed, and you can just kill the process. And, um, yeah, then it doesn't work. Obviously, we might want to turn it back on when we go to the Tesla service center. <laughs> or we can add some GPS positioning. You can easily query where the car is, even get the address and things like that. And um, he offends it. So it's only possible to do that at the Tesla service location. Heck, Tesla could do that. But okay. We're doing a lot of things which Tesla could do. Um, but they have other priorities, I think. So, Which data paths uh, uh, exist to get root? Well, uh, through the Internet. Obviously, all these cars are connected to the Internet. There must be certainly a way to get into that. But maybe it's a bit difficult. Maybe only... Singularity-capable APIs will be able to intrude to all Tesla cars. I don't know. 
Uh, it's a nightmare of Elon Musk that um, all cars in the world would be hacked and directly sent to the same location, creating chaos in traffic, things like that. Um, it's a risk, yes, because of obviously Tesla can access all the cars. It only takes one malicious person at Tesla to do that. Um, other possibility is uh, through your Tesla Android app. You can steer the car with your Tesla Android app. You can um, set the um, air conditioning, uh, lots of functionality of your app. And obviously, that's also a data path, uh, which is heavily protected, of course. Uh, mothership.tesla.com is basically the central point where all these things go through, um, where all the cars connect to. Aside from that, we have our inter internal Ethernet network, uh, which means we have a physical connection um, at our central display behind our uh, instrument cluster and also uh, going to our autopilot, which is fairly easily accessible. Now, getting physical access to the Ethernet network, you would presume, okay, then we are having root. Well, it's not the case. So it's very good protected. And um, CAN buses might be another way of access. Tesla is a very good uh, citizen uh, with respect to security. Uh, whenever there is a problem security-wise, they fix it immediately. Not only that, they, well, what is the problem, of course? Well, if somebody can get route to somebody else's car, there is a possibility for abuse. It is possible to help stealing Teslas. It is possible to fake the mileage. It is possible to fake VIN numbers and trim levels of the car. You can control, control the cars and, uh, and things like that remotely. So, yeah, obviously, there is a danger of abuse. And this is a good thing, of course, that Tesla is immediately addressing these issues when they come to be. Also, Tesla has a bug bounty program. This means if you find a way to root your Tesla, you can, of course, share it with everybody to be able to install Freedom EV. But if you tell it to Tesla, they will give you money, and they will fix it right away. So it's a difficult situation for Freedom EV. <laughs> um, with the Model 3, they even have upped the game. So now with the Pound to Own contest in Vancouver, which will happen in March, they have really said, OK, if you can route our car in these different ways, or access, or even just do a denial of service attack on our autopilot system, we give you $50,000. We give you $50, OK, it's hard to compete with that. Not only that, if you're the first one to do one of those things, you get a Model 3 for free as well. So yeah, mm. there is a guy who has posted that he has roots on his Model 3, and he is running Ubuntu as well on it uh, in a ch rooted environment. So, but still, he's not eligible for any of these prices because he desoldered the eMMC put some changes in there, and put it back. Which is, of course, a method to do. Not everybody will want to do that, of course. Um, and it might fight your warranty a little bit. Well, only for the device and not the rest of the car, of course. But there are some unaligned interests between Tesla and us, um, and as a whole, maybe, a vendors as a whole. So, well, they will fix it right away. So it's, of course, great that they fix it, but it's not that great if it's the only way to gain access to your own car. It's your car. Come on. When I bought my Tesla first, I sent an email to, to Elon Musk, and I said, I'm, I'm turning 40. Please give me root on my own car. <laughs> Turns out he doesn't read emails so much, and I should have maybe sent it over Twitter. There was somebody on the um, 
Tesla Motors Club Forum, who was so kind to, to assist me there first uh, for the ECA and then using a undocumented exploit. So it was great that he wanted to uh, share that with me. Um, yeah. So I, I hope that um, there is uh, not right now an official way to ask root access for your own freaking car, um, but I hope it will change quickly. And, and there is um, a security researchers program with Tesla um, um, in which uh, Tesla also say that if you are analyzing the security and you break your car, it's no problem. We'll just reinstall it for you without any cost. I think that's a great thing to do. Um, they even say, we can do it multiple times. <laughs> that's nice. So I do think they are doing the right thing. I hope they will do it as well for Root. And I understand that they are cautious about it, but come on, we're all grown-ups here. Eh? And why not flag cars like that? And if people are buying a second-hand car, that they know, okay, this car has been rooted. So maybe, maybe the trim level is wrong. Maybe people fiddled with it. Decrease the, the price, or maybe yeah, it runs freedom with yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> up the price. <laughs> I don't know. But um, important is, of course, that Tesla is a trendsetter for the industry, and what Tesla is going to do now will also impact what other vendors will do later on. And that's also the reason why I go through the effort of, of starting this project right now, and why I think it's important that we make this step right now of being able to open source our cars. Because it's the beginning of the new era of electric cars, and yeah, it's probably the last iterations of cars, I would say. Um, I don't know. After that, uh, will be tunnels and flying, I guess. OK, so how to get root from someone who has a root method? from a Tesla service technician or third-party repair center, obviously these people, they have roots. They have access to the tool, um, get the toolbox uh, program from uh, Tesla. So if they just give you access or just use the command line to have this one comment pasted, it's already there. And this script is very simple. You can look at its script yourself. It will just see if the USB stick is not there, okay, it stops, it exits. It doesn't do anything anymore. In the current iterations, it runs out of cron tab because fastpool cron is on var and writable was an easy way. Maybe on the Intel equipped cars, we'll have to turn it into a daemon or something else. We'll have to see if we get access to those um, cars. Also for other cars, non-Tesla cars, they might have different ways of getting things started. Um, but yeah. I hope we'll be able to find it out quickly. And if all else fails, yeah, desoldering or resoldering EMMC, it's not that hard. It's always a way. So what have we put already inside Freedom EV? didn't make it yet the pin to drive <laughs> to disable so I hope we be able to add that quickly um, good we get a warning message cloak mode it makes you invisible for tracking by the vehicle and mobile phone calls 
mapping music streaming stops working. That it could be abused and the pin to drive to enable LTE disabled. Clock mode disables the USB 3G connection to the internet. When we turn clock mode off again, if we turn clock mode off again, it will take a little bit of seconds and then we see that LTE gets enabled again. So the message is that it gets enabled. It takes five seconds for the interface to recognize that the USB device is back online and then we get back our data connection to the internet. Cloak mode, ensuring your freedom. Freedom of E gives you easy access to developer and factory mode, which can be enabled at the touch of a button. Developer and factory mode will restart the cute application running on our display. When we look at the top of our display, we see that a blue developer text is added to our T of Tesla. This is Tesla provided functionality. If we now touch this button, then we will get the CD developer mode. Inside developer mode, we get a nice overview of the different packs in our car. As the car is currently plugged in, we see what the car battery management system is actually doing. Developer mode also shows us when the car was first built, so February 1st, 2017 in this case. There is a special terminal mode inside developer mode which gives us an overview of all the important uh, temperature metrics in the system. Go out of developer mode again by touching the exit button. Let's go reboot our system again. When Elon Musk announced two years ago that hotspot mode was coming to Tesla cars through a simple software upgrade, everybody was thrilled. With hotspot mode, you can just add this antenna to a car and turn it into an in-car Wi-Fi vehicle. Just insert the USB Wi-Fi adapter and ready to go. The Freedom EV app keeps track of data usage so Tesla can properly bill usage of their network if they want to do so. Some things you can enable with Freedom EV don't make a lot of sense. Moonshine mode changes the color of your display behind the steering wheel in a psychedelic way. If one day you decide you should want to live without freedom EV, complete removal is as simple as running the removal script. Thank you, thank you. Um, so here is the GitHub project. Um, it's uh, completely accessible. There are already some uh, contributors. And, um, and last night, um, also a friend of mine um, um, from Hungary, a great uh, Tesla hacker, um, also installed it on his cars and um, had it, gave it a test. And quite a few typos were already fixed as a result. So um, we bundle this functionality, which we can just enable in the web interface, uh, in what we call apps. Um, and we see here in the master branch, there is the slash uh, freedom EV. Um, so we put everything on the USB stick, the root file system, in a directory freedom EV. And there we have a directory called apps. This directory called apps contains symbolic links to apps in progress are apps available. The web interface only allows us to create sim links basically to um, apps available out of this apps directory, and only those um, sim links will be active. 
And it also means that uh, when the USB stick is detected, the application is started by running a activation script out of it. So it's just a scale shell script which can start a service. Also, um, the Freedom of V start script will copy the deactivation script to the root file system, just to the temp uh, directory in RAM, um, so that if the USB stick needs to be, uh, is de sorry, is removed, that it can still run this deactivation script to kill dangling processes. Then there is also a description.json file, and this is the JSON file is basically the name of the program and um, some more description, everything which is visible in the web interface. Also, it can contain hidden. Um, the marking, the fact that it's hidden, means that it's not visible in the web interface. Also, the Freedom EV core itself is implemented, the web interface is implemented as an app. You can easily. Uh, copy stuff from it. And then we have some directories every minute, every hour, every five minutes, every day to implement some kind of uh, crontap-like um, behavior. As the script Freedom EV Start runs every minute, it will look in those directories if relevant and run whatever is in there in a periodic way. So here we see the example of the um, description.json. And by the way, this directory um, zero template app in the apps in progress directory. You can just copy that. There's nothing going on in, in there, just some um, explanation. You can copy the directory for your own application. If you want to create birthday mode, uh, working on it a little bit, um, you can easily uh, do that. So you see three entries in the description dot JSON, the name of the app, the description, and if it's visible or not. So in the apps, we see that which current things are enabled. So yeah, if you want to update um, Freedom of E, just to hit pull on the root file system, uh, which will basically um, put some things in there for far uh, away Freedom of E, and also um, the slash Freedom of E directory. So. Uh, what are the current problems and things uh, which are to do? Well, uh, some things in the movie were not really there yet. Um, so the, um, to disable uh, for cloaking mode, we disable right now the um, LTE modem. But uh, Wi-Fi is not yet disabled. It's easy to disable it. Just have to add it. Um, but there's also no pin to drive. It's not being asked. Uh, so yeah, would prefer that's in there. Um, it's not easy, just the interface which needs to be built for that. Um, we had some more plans for making movies of, it, of things which are already in there, like Webmin is in there. Maybe you're not that fond of Webmin, I know. It doesn't work great on the web um, browser anyway, but it might be interesting when your wife is driving just to be able to install some other things without having to pull out your laptop. Um, a bloopers movie was also a plan. Thank you to my wife, by the way, for allowing me to do this. <laughs> I warn, warn her when, when there is a possibility that one of the displays is going to reboot. The car still drives when the, the systems reboot. It's maybe hard to know the speed, but yeah. <laughs> so, also, the, the proper hotspot traffic accounting is not in there yet. Just um, another lot of time for that. It shouldn't be too, too hard to implement. It should be properly done because, of course, the car switches between Wi-Fi and um, LTE 3G all the time. So we don't want to pay for our own Wi-Fi uh, connection. So some um, other things. Yeah, the hotspot mode works through SSH SOC tunnel right now. Probably some IP tables uh, problems. Um, Unbox, I worked on that a little bit, try to get Android working on uh, the platform. Now, Unbox is more geared towards running on Intel, uh, so it might be easier on the newer cars to get that running. Would be nice, of course, to be able to run Spotify, things like that, on your car. Competes a bit with um, ads functionality, basically, compared to the Tesla uh, things. Also, car logo addition, I have... Um, changed some, some images in the car. Um, I overlay them using um, bind mounting. 
so I don't really change the actual files. Um, and uh, this means that it gets to see like that. I like it a lot. I think lots of people will like it too, to be able to put their own logos, their names, whatever, on their cars. So I want to make an app for that as well, so it can be easily done. Okay. Also, I would like Deepar Reverse. The other day, I crashed into a car behind me, blamed the fact that the car didn't beep when I was reversing. Wow. <laughs> um, web interface for reverse SSH tunnel is not uh, finished yet. AirPlay over Wi-Fi. Uh, M player to view movies. We can also check if the car is driving or not easily uh, for safety reasons. Um, Compilation of brow browser like the uh, one from Tesla, similar limitations, some cleanup of IP tables. Button widgets sometimes receives two events, often receives two, so it might be the problem with the widget or not. We need to troubleshoot it a little bit. How Tesla friendly, oh, hacker friendly is Tesla? Seems to be quite all right. I don't have a lot of time, so. Um, I don't think it voids the warranty, what, I, what we are doing here. Um, Obviously, don't break anything. If I break something, I also tell Tesla and I don't claim warranty. I wanted to pay just a few euros because I broke a plastic cover myself. So, very reasonable. Okay. Um, I need your help. Please contribute. <laughs> if there are any questions, I might have a minute or so left. Yes. Okay, so the question is, um, if we perform a software update on the car, will Freedom EV still work? Yes, um, so uh, for now, yes. So um, basically it relies on the fact that we have root access and persistent storage. As long as that's not being touched, it keeps on working. Obviously we need to remain cautious. It is possible that they might break stuff and we need to work around it. Um, so we will always say um, what the latest support is releases. Um, there is a rumor that um, 2019.2 might break some stuff, um, and we'll see how to deal with that, if that's really true. Yeah.